Hey guys, Jam here, and in today's video I'm going to show you guys how to kitbash a Primaris Black Dragon as voted by you guys for the next Community Army kitbash thingamabob. So I'm going to be using this body here, just a normal intercessor. Yeah, the main thing with Black Dragons is their bone protrusions and horns and all that kind of stuff. Most of the artwork I see of them, they're just normal looking marines with kind of blades coming out their forearms. But because this is a kit bash video, I'm going to go slightly more over the top than what you would maybe do on a an entire army of black dragons. If I was just doing a whole army, I'd do like bone here and there, but because it's one guy, I'm going to go a bit more today. So I'm going to be doing a little bit of green stuff towards the end, just trying to do some scale work. So I've seen some artwork with them with kind of dragony scales and stuff like that. But for mainly for the bones and stuff like that, I was actually thinking of carving like bone-like structure-y things out of like leftover sprue bits. But then I remembered I had the, the skull pack from Games Workshop. And obviously with the skulls, you got lots of horns. So you can slice all these off, stick them to places. I've got a Chaos Marine head here, one of the old ones. Well, his other head's already been chopped off there. You can use those. I've got this piece here, which I'm thinking I'm going to use. Yeah, I'm not sure where this is from. Something from the Slaves to Darkness or something like that. I got this aberrant thing from Gene Steeler Colts. He's kind of got this claw arms. So I thought I could snip this off a bit. And what I'm also going to do is by putting a horn on his helmet, I think I'm going to try and slice this kind of forehead bone structure out here. And also black dragons have kind of pointed tongues. So I kind of tried to cut some off there to see if it would work, but it doesn't really work with the Primaris head. But anyway, that's all the bits I'm going to use. I'm going to glue all the main bits like weapons, backpacks, all the stuff I'm, I can do now. I'm just going to glue them together. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to be sticking bones onto the elbow and forearm kind of going backwards. So I'm going to do that first and then I'm going to stick the arms and stuff on and then we'll move on from there. All right, so I've got this bony looking piece here and I pre-measured one piece earlier just to see if it would kind of work. So I'm going to be cutting one piece about that long. So let's see if I can get that done quick. So I want to try and get them the same size, obviously. Try and, well, it doesn't need to be obvious. Bone protrusions can be all over the place. So it's roughly around about there. So we've got them. It's a bit smaller, but that's fine. And for a smaller piece, I'm going to be doing this one. And there we go. So let's get this arm out first, because I'm going to get him in this kind of shooting a pistol stance. Nothing too special. This is just going to be a normal intercessor because I can't make everybody a big HQ or hero looking character. So let's see how this is going to work because we might have to cut the bottom at a certain angle. As you can see there, if you wanted it to go this way, like that, obviously you're going to have to cut at this, like at an angle like that. So I'm going to try and cut this way quick, if that makes any sense. Sorry if I'm not getting this on camera quite well because it's a very, very tiny piece of plastic right here. So I've cut it at a nice little sloped angle like that, so it'll fit to the arm. Let's, let's try this out without me losing this piece. Let's do a little bit of a test here. I'm not sure if I'll have to do some green stuff around the bone later, kind of make it look like it's popping out of the armor or not. But like I said, we're going to test it out and see. I might actually put the glue down first. Hey, that actually fits pretty bang on there. Just push it in a little bit. And the reason why I'm not doing like forearm work things like that because first of all i think that would need a bit more work to make it blend into the armor and stuff a little bit better maybe but also i've seen every artwork i've seen everybody that's tried kit bashing these always does that does the for forearm thing so thought i'd try something slightly different but like i said if you're doing a whole army you'd have to vary it up anyway all right so there's that one now let's try the longer one now we're going to do the same thing again just cut it like that if you guys can see like that way so it'll fit with this kind of stuff going up putting a little bit extra glue on so it kind of over fills the area kind of helps it blend in and mold around to the side because all the plastic around it will melt as well so it's not a bad thing and there we have it we've got ourselves a nice little bony arm here and to be honest it actually fits pretty perfect and flush there's nothing that kind of looks like it's out of place doesn't look tacked on it looks pretty good well, i'm pretty surprised with that and quite happy to be honest so i'm going to be doing the exact same thing again with the other arm so i'll get back to you guys when they're both done but really super super easy all right so i got the arms on i chucked the backpack on to make sure the spikes don't get in the way so that's the arm i did off camera yeah not too bad i think they kind of poking out quite naturally i think this arm probably looks a bit better i think these ones are a bit thicker yeah not 
looking too bad yet and i think so far it does give it that extra bit of flavor now i was thinking of putting that gun a bit more back but i mean that's a pose thing anyway that's my problem on that and yeah really that easy now it's time to do the helmet and horns and stuff like that now like i said before i'm going to be using this gene sealer cold aberrant head thingy so what i'm going to do is i'm going to slice this off and then i'm going to try and clean it up afterwards to just try and get it to cut and neat as close to that beginning kind of section there as possible so yeah i don't know how i'm gonna do this just try not to destroy that bone hey that came out pretty good so i saw a lot of people commenting on the like the voting poll saying like oh hope you don't make this look too much like chaos or something like that but i feel like this doesn't look quite chaos see this little head ridge kind of thing but i must say this video the one difficult thing is everything is super super tiny all right let's try the first dry fit yeah, I can already see that's not quite working yet. And I'm not sure it will work, but yeah, everything's so fiddly. Not too bad, actually. Let's just try and move this a little bit. Not too bad. I think there's a bit of a... There's too much of like a straight edge gap, so I'm going to have to try and taper it down a bit. So I think it'll be much easier if I just cut like an actual horn out and just stick it on there. But I'm going to try and give this a go. All right, so kind of new plan. I was busy working on that little like ridgy bone thing and it accidentally shot off and I have absolutely no idea where it went. It was so tiny I'm never going to find it unless I spent hours like rolling around on my carpet or something. So we're going to go for the easier plan of using this little claw from the Aberrant kit. This will probably be much quicker, much easier. Not as cool but yeah, I don't know where that thing's gone unfortunately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut quite a big piece off because obviously you can you can keep cutting down until it fits but you can't put more on if that makes any sense so let's just cut it about there try not to lose this one and then we just kind of try fit it until we get it the size and position that we want really and to be fair the cut I did is pretty much perfect there but I feel that's a bit too long got some unicorn vibes going there so I'm going to cut it a little bit shorter yeah, it's still a bit too long, I think. I feel with the big horn going up that way. I think we need to get it about like that angle instead of that that angle and a bit shorter because, yeah, I just want a bit of like a bone protrusion, like an overgrowth on your forehead, not like an actual like, your horn coming out, if you know what I mean. All right, that's actually pretty good because it fits in that little ridge there as well. But I don't know if I've made it go a bit too down now. I'm going to try and angle it a little bit more up. There's a bit too down now. Actually, I've just had a bit of a think. And the bones on here are kind of like ridged and stuff like that. So I thought it actually wouldn't make sense to have like a smoother bone coming out. I mean, I don't think it would make much difference. But I think I'm going to go for this kind of bone instead. I'm going to cut it about there. So it's kind of curling upwards. I think that might fit in a bit better. So I'm a little bit annoyed actually. I lost that like forehead ridge thing because i'm playing around with like different types of horns and stuff and just normal horns like that i mean they look okay but they kind of got unicorn vibes and i'm not really digging it i prefer that whole like forehead ridge thing going on and yeah i can't really find another aberrant head that looks similar but this is kind of like elbow spike coming out and i'm hoping that maybe that kind of like angle might work because i feel like the head needs something so i'm gonna try and see if this one will work if not i'm gonna have to raid my bits box a little bit deeper down hopefully i can find something a bit more cool either that or this guy's gonna get like massive antlers coming out like just <laughs> glue this on top of that All right so i'm gonna go try that out and be back with you guys well hot damn i finally got it done that's probably one of the most annoying and painstaking things i've ever done in my life trying to get these tiny little horns on here and it's looking a bit rough now because I ended up getting like glue everywhere and trying to move it around. But I think once it's dry, I'll clean it up and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I managed to get the elbow kind of thing. It doesn't quite have the unicorn vibe. And I figured out the trick. You've got one horn coming out, you've got unicorn vibes. You've got two next to each other, you've got devil vibes. But if you get them like two or three back like going up a row, then you've got more of that like head growth, ridgy kind of vibe that the previous thing had and that's kind of what i wanted to go so i got that one then i got a tiny little one just behind it just to give that extra little bit of growth vibe like i say once it's dried up i'll definitely clean that up and make it look a bit better but yeah let's stick that onto the model so we can actually have a proper look at it and there we have it so far got the horns on the arms 
not looking too bad got some horns on the heads it might be a little bit too much right now <laughs> i think it's like quite top heavy but i think once i've got the green stuff hanging down there i've got the bags on all that kind of stuff i think it'll even it out quite a lot yeah but i don't think that head turned out too bad once i'm cleaned down at the end of the video and give you guys a proper showcase i think it's gonna look pretty good so yeah let's start working on the next step all right so i've got the shoulder pads on this guy obviously mine are going into the death watch but depending on what shoulder pads you want then you can switch that up but now it's time for the green stuff now weirdly enough i did um kind of scale dragon skin kind of thing on my last community kid bash video which was salamanders and now my next one i'm doing it again so which is not a bad thing because I felt like last time I could have improved quite a lot. So let's see if I can. So obviously got my green stuff here. So yeah, I'm just going to cut a little slither there. I think last time I was a little bit too short, but this is probably going to be way too much now. And same as last time, I'm going to cut the middle out because the middle sometimes you get little hard bits. Now with green stuff, always make sure your hands and tools and everything are nice and wet. Dabbing my fingers there and I'm just going to blend it together. All right, so I've got my little ball blended up now. I'm going to make sure this area is wet as usual. Probably should scrape this old green stuff off at some point. Make sure this is a bit wet. And I'm just going to roll it out with my knife. And there we have it. We got ourselves a little <laughs> scaly lizard pelt. Now we just got to work on it. Now I'm going to do the same thing as I did last time. I'm going to leave the center kind of lines a lot thicker because I imagine that's like kind of the the spine of the creature so let's put one in the middle remember you don't want to cut through just make a line leave that a bit thicker and then maybe thin it out as we go down i have seen some other techniques where you make the shape of the kind of the loincloth or whatever it is you want let that dry then you make tiny little balls of green stuff and push it into that so that it kind of makes like little flat scaly things but i want to kind of practice with this simple technique and see where it takes me so the same thing again just the opposite direction now you might think that looks a bit weird and boring but what you got to do now is go over the lines again but you want to go for example let's say this middle one i'm going to pull downwards and then with the next line along i'm going to go up and then again, just rotate that, go down, and just keep doing that until you've done them all. Obviously, if you mess it up a bit, it's fine. I mean, it's scales from a dead animal that's also been in combat with a space marine. So, And we are going to rough it up in a second anyway. So let's go up on this side. And obviously, this is going under the belt, so I want a kind of flat surface here. I'm going to cut this off. going to make this one kind of long. And like I always say, if you've got leftover green stuff... If you want beards on your primaris heads or hair or anything, that's always a good way to do it. Doesn't need much green stuff there. And because it's kind of circular, we've got to rough it up and make it look like actual tattered leather or something. So we're going to start slicing bits and pulling bits out of here. Just want to quickly make sure there's some more depth in these to, so that the paint and wash can actually sit in there. So it looks a bit weird now, but once we've got it on the model, we're going to work it in a bit more as well. Okay, so I might have put, not put enough water on the base there because it kind of stuck and i ruined the detail a bit so definitely keep an eye out for that but next step is to just put a little dab of super glue on his crotch so it stays in place while we're working okay it was actually a bit too wide i feel so i've cut it down a little bit and that's also the section that lost the detail and then we have somewhat decent looking scales i kind of ruined the pattern a bit when i peeled it off though a little bit annoying i could rework it but i'm going to try fix it on here now, I think that's all in the the movement and everything feels right for the model already. So I don't need to play with that too much. Okay, so I've kind of positioned it, made sure I've kind of roughed up the edges and stuff and got it the way I want. I think from that angle, you can see it a bit better. Not looking too bad. I think this is definitely a technique I want to work on more. And it's quite a quick and simple way to get your kind of salamandry dragon vibes pretty quick. Alrighty, so this guy is pretty much done, to be honest. The rest of the stuff I'm going to be doing now is just kind of accessories and yeah, so I think he's looking pretty good. I don't think he looks chaos -y. I think he looks like some sort of lizard dragon man. But I am thinking of maybe adding some very small bone protrusions coming out of the side of his leg. Just for that extra bit of flavor down at the bottom end. So I think I'm going to do that now. Just going to get any sort of like spiky pieces. I'm going to make a very small kind of like little spiky nubbins coming out of there. So I've got this tail thing from the, I think it's the Slave Sea Darkness Manticore or something like that. I'm just going to chop the tips off of these spikes and hopefully that works out pretty good. Okay, super, super tiny piece. Like I said, this is one of the more simple kid bashes I've ever done. But because of these tiny little bone pieces, everything takes me like 10 hours longer than it should. So yeah, I'm going to go from 
big to small, three little spikes coming up the leg. That's pretty much it, really. I was planning on spacing them apart, but maybe clump together a little bit more would look more natural. I don't know. I'm going to glue the first one at the bottom and kind of figure it out from there. And once again, putting these tiny little horn spike things on was a complete nightmare. Took me a bit longer than it should have, to be honest, but... And I'm not really sure about it. I think like these ones are like kind of like big ridge kind of like they spiking backwards and everything and then these are just tiny smooth ones poking out the side. So I don't know I'm gonna leave them there for now. They I mean they're pretty easy. I just like cut them off smooth that down to flat surface. So I'll leave it there for you guys. Maybe it'll give you some inspiration or an idea or two and I'll think about it more for myself if I want to get rid of them later because I don't know if it really fits in right now. And to be honest the last thing I'm going to do now is I'm just going to stick on Pistol holsters, bags, and obviously because this guy's death watch, I'm going to be putting like maybe a bag or two on his chest there. So I'm going to cut back when it's all done with the showcase. And there we have it guys, nice quick and easy simple way to make pretty effective black dragons. And of course the green stuff kind of scaly thing, super simple and you can use it on any model you want, even space wolves really. But yeah, comment below what you think of this dude and also comment below if you are a fan of black dragons or if you actually got a black dragon army because it's not really one I see around pretty much ever to be honest. And as always, if you enjoyed the video you know what to do. And if you enjoy this kind of hobby content and you haven't subscribed yet, then maybe check out my channel and do so because I release content like this every single week. And if you do happen to actually watch my content quite often, then maybe check out my Patreon and my merch store if you want to kind of support me in any way possible. You know, like I always say, help me keep the bits box full so I can keep these videos coming. But until the next one, guys, bye-bye.